I was going into the desert and I was taking all my clothes off and I'm going, God, if you're really real, reveal yourself to me. And then the Lord showed me that there was a light on me and I was going to go back to where the Lord. After associating with Lonnie Frisbee, Smith's church became the central force of the Jesus movement. And then people have been doing this ever since. Hey there guys, I hope everybody's doing well out there. Today we're going to talk about Lonnie Frisbee, the Jesus movement, the Jesus Revolution movie a little bit, and Chuck Smith a little bit. Jonathan Ralmi, who plays Jesus in The Chosen, is now playing Lonnie Frisbee. But we're really focusing on the real life of Lonnie Frisbee, what actually happened, rather than whatever was portrayed in the movie. And if you watch the whole video, I can pretty much guarantee you that you will learn some things that you didn't know before, unless you have extensively studied Lonnie Frisbee his life. Now, yes, in many ways, he was the catalyst to the Jesus movement. At least, that's what people call it, the Jesus movement. And Lonnie Frisbee was a really weird character. He was a hippie who supposedly found Jesus while he was tripping on LSD. Then he joined the Pentecostal charismatic movement. He preached Jesus for something like 20 years, but he was known to be doing drugs and living a homosexual lifestyle for a whole lot of that. And then he eventually died of AIDS. So, is he a person that we should be celebrating in Christianity and making movies about? I'll be honest with you, I think that this is literally insane. And that anyone who can look at Lonnie Frisbee and be unsure of whether or not he was a sound preacher must also be insane or mentally impaired in some way. Here's Lonnie Frisbee's testimony as to how he was called. Called me. I, went, I was going into the desert and I was taking all my clothes off and I'm going, God, if you're really real, reveal yourself to me. And one afternoon, the whole atmosphere of this canyon that I was in started to tingle and get light and it started to change and I'm just going, uh-oh, I didn't want to be there. Okay, so Lonnie was on LSD, and if you know anything about hallucinogens, you know that pagan cultures use these substances to communicate with spirits and gods. And the Apostle Paul said that the pagan gods were actually demons. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 20. And I'm not saying that Lonnie couldn't have communicated with God or some angel or something, but what I'm saying is it's not unusual for people who take these substances to communicate with something that identifies itself as a spirit or a god. And there's been lots of research done in modern times about this phenomenon, and they realized that the spirit or god that a person communicates with while in hallucinogens has to do with their prior belief system. Lonnie was raised in America, and a lot of people have been influenced by Christianity even if they themselves have not truly believed in Jesus. Now on top of all of this, we don't know if Lonnie really communicated with anything at all or if he was hallucinating because he was on LSD. And that's why it's incredibly weird that God would give him this whole thing that he's about to explain while he's on LSD because it makes Lonnie's testimony about this much less reliable. And obviously God knows all things so he would know that. Additionally, would God honor Lonnie's behavior while he's tripping on drugs and he's stripping down naked by reaching out to him right then? It sounds very far-fetched. It sounds very unlikely to me. But the Lord identified himself. He said, I'm Jesus. He said, I build nations and I carry them down. It's better for a nation never to have known me, but to have known me and turn their back from me. That's one of the first things that God told me. I didn't know what that meant. I killed nations and I turned them down. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes unto the Father but by me. I am the door of the sheepfold. If any man enters in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber, and the gatekeeper will not open unto him. So he, I always thought that all roads led to Rome. But he explained to me that he was the only way to know God. Now, this part of the story I might believe if it weren't for the part that follows next, because this part could have been God, Jesus, speaking to Lonnie for his own benefit, bringing him true knowledge for whatever reason. And I'm not saying that God can't do that however he wishes to do it. But would God honor the things that Lonnie has done here, taking drugs, stripping his clothes off, yelling at God? Would God honor that and bless Lonnie by bringing him into the ministry as he supposedly did next? So I accepted him and he said, I'm going to send you to the people. 
and I saw a vision of thousands of people and they were wandering around in a maze of gray darkness, bumping into one another with no direction or purpose for their lives. And then the Lord showed me that there was a light on me that he was placing on my life, and it was Jesus Christ, and I was going to go there the word of the Lord. I find that part of the story, in particular, very hard to believe, and the things that happened after this speak volumes. Frisbee relates that he received the Pentecostal baptism while visiting at a Foursquare church, the prevalent Pentecostal denomination in Southern California. I was in a little Baptist, I mean a little Foursquare church when I got baptized with the Holy Spirit. And uh, there was this evangelist from Texas, he was kind of dressed like this. <laughs> <laughs> And he was the kind of man that, you know, threw the microphone cord around and said, In the name of Jesus, you know, and been sweating all over the place. And I, well, I got it, you know. <laughs> I couldn't help but get it. It was like 10,000 volts of electricity. Yeah, so even if the other part was real, the part where Jesus communicated to him directly, I feel like Lonnie immediately went into a Pentecostal church and received some kind of impartation of a spirit. It does not sound to me like the Holy Spirit at all. It shocked him like electricity. I don't see that in scripture anywhere. The person was throwing around the cord, lots of theatrics, talking about, in the name of Jesus, according to Lonnie himself, right? This doesn't sound like a legit preacher to me. Also, this is in a Pentecostal church. Now, Pentecostals are not continuationists. They do not believe that the gifts of the Spirit simply continued. They believe that a new Pentecostal outpouring happened at Azusa Street in 1906 in America. Right. And I just, I don't believe that. I don't see any evidence for it. I don't read it in scripture. And the Pentecostal church has given us the modern hyper charismatic movement. This existed a long time before Lonnie Frisbee, a long time before Rodney Howard Brown and the Vineyard Movement and all of these guys who have perpetrated and passed this off as Christianity and as a new move of the spirit. So I'm not against the gifts of the Spirit. I'm just like a traditional Christian, not a hyper-charismatic or a Pentecostal. And there's sort of a fine line between the two. Also, you notice that Lonnie was commissioned by God himself, and he accepted Jesus. He should have been filled with the Holy Spirit right then, shouldn't he have? But he felt the need to go to this four-square Pentecostal church and get, quote-unquote, baptized in the Spirit. This concept is not biblical. In scripture, you receive the Spirit when you believe, not later. And you don't receive a little bit of the Spirit now and a whole lot more when some guy lays hands on you and prays some unbiblical prayer about baptism of the Spirit. And just to be clear, I say it's unbiblical because we are born again of the Holy Spirit when we are saved by faith in Jesus Christ. And being born again or receiving the indwelling of the Holy Spirit is being baptized in the Spirit. Once you have the Spirit, you have the Spirit. There's no need for another person to lay hands on you and to somehow give you more of the Spirit. Once you're born again, you start the process of sanctification. And that's just one of the major errors in Pentecostal teaching. And I know people who have personally messed up their Christian faith by having this done. And Lonnie Frisbee gets worse and crazier from here. This guy's like a Christian Jim Morrison, and I use the word Christian lightly. Frisbee thereafter associated with Chuck Smith, a struggling minister who had recently broken away from the Foursquare, a Pentecostal denomination. Smith had been struggling for years to grow a church, and at one point, he quit the ministry. But after associating with Lonnie Frisbee, Smith's church became the central force of the Jesus movement. Right, and apparently this is what the Jesus Revolution movie is about. I haven't seen it, but I've seen the previews. But in the trailer, they sort of made it seem like he was this traditional Baptist preacher or something, and it's nothing of the sort. Chuck Smith is a tough nut to crack. He's hard to figure out. It does seem that he broke away from the Foursquare Church because of the excesses and the unbiblical stuff that goes on there, like not only accepting women pastors, but promoting that, as well as displays of multiple people speaking in tongues in public. Oh, 
Chuck Smith spoke out against that. Ironically enough, he also spoke out against being slain in the spirit years after he parted ways from Lonnie Frisbee. And at that time, Lonnie Frisbee was going around slaying people in the spirit. So, but I will say that Chuck started a Bible study in Corona, California that grew into a prospering church. And there's a whole long story about how he left that for Calvary Chapel, which was a very small, struggling church. And both Chuck and the people of Calvary Chapel really believed that God was leading him there and that it was meant to be, it was prophesied, and all sorts of crazy stuff. So I don't want to go too far down that rabbit hole, but let's just say that the way that the movie portrays this is, as far as I can tell, very inaccurate. So Chuck Smith really deserves his own video. A lot of his teachings were solid, but he always maintained certain elements of his Pentecostal background, and I think he was very irresponsible to let Lonnie Frisbee basically become a pastor at age 19. I was pastoring at Calvary at the age of 19, but they never knew how old I was because I looked like I was just come out of a cave. While he was still cleaning up his hippie act, trying to get off of the drugs and all the other stuff that he was doing. He was mixing this mysticism with his professed Christianity, baptizing people while he was in LSD, and they're on LSD without repentance. In fact, many of Lonnie's biggest advocates admit that many of the people that supposedly got saved then, later, most of them, some will say, even fell away. And maybe that's why Lonnie always continued to fall back into those things. And as we all know, the Bible tells us that an overseer, basically a pastor, should not be a new convert so that he will not become conceited lest he fall into the condemnation incurred by the devil. That's 1 Timothy 3.6. And Lonnie himself even felt used by Chuck. He felt that Chuck had used him as a bridge to reach these young people. And it was actually Chuck who had wanted to go out and reach the hippies prior to ever meeting Lonnie. He was the one who wanted to set up a meeting with a hippie specifically for this purpose. So Chuck really was the person with the plan. And I think the plan was incredibly irresponsible when you get down to it. But I also think that God used it as God works all things for the good of those who love him. So of course, he used it to bring people to him even though the plan itself was unbiblical. One thing that Chuck Smith did that was obviously wrong was that he predicted the rapture in 1981 and the end of the world in 1988. Now, obviously that didn't happen, and we're about to hear a lot about Chuck Smith and prophecy, but if Chuck Smith can't get the prophecies in the Bible right and understand those, then why would I believe the prophecies coming directly from Chuck Smith and his wife, Kay Smith? Because they believed that God was talking to them a lot. But if God was talking to Chuck Smith, wouldn't he have told him, hey, the rapture's not going to happen in 1981? The world's not going to end in 1988? Maybe you shouldn't write that in your books? It makes a lot more sense to me that Chuck was just a confused guy who probably wasn't hearing directly from God and thought that he was. There's a whole lot of that in the Pentecostal church. And it seems it all began with a prophecy delivered by Smith's wife, Kay. We were at the altar praying that night. There were 15 of us at the altar praying. And the Spirit of God came to a prophecy with Kay Smith and said to us, because of your praise and adoration before my throne tonight, I'm going to bless the whole coast of California. And I thought, whoo, she really thought of a dilly tonight. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought, the whole coast of California, that's got to be God. No, it doesn't. Anyone could prophesy anything that they want to. Right? You could make up anything. False prophets have said that California would fall into the ocean by now, and that hasn't happened. It doesn't have to be God just because the false prophecy is large. In fact, one of the key characteristics of the Jesus People movement was the fact that they considered themselves to be the last generation of young people before the return of Jesus. And this happened both due to false prophecies in the movement and also because of church leadership misinterpreting the Bible. And that brings us to a very important point which I have to drive home. And that is, if sound biblical churches don't go out and make an impact in the world, false teachers, hyper-charismatics, and worse, will get out there and do it. And I talked not long ago in a video about TBN and, you know, all the false teacher televangelists and how they changed the definition of Christianity. They made everyone think that they were Christians and that they were the ones preaching the true gospel. And to this day, when you expose those people, people say, well, what have you done? How many people have you reached? They've reached millions. And while they don't have a great point, they do have a point. 
Because I have not reached as many people as Kenneth Copeland has. I've not reached as many people as Creflo Dollar. Now, I also haven't taken all those people's money, and I haven't taught all of the false doctrines and heresies that the Word of Faith teachers have taught. But it's true that I haven't reached as many people either, because these guys are out there. They're getting money from their preaching. And the more people they reach, the more they can get those donations. So they're going out to everyone in the highways and the byways. And they preach a false gospel. Or they preach a watered-down gospel. Because sometimes they have most of the gospel right, but they add things to it. Or they make the central point about prosperity in this world. Or they make it more about a special anointing than becoming born again in the Spirit of God through faith in Jesus Christ. So yes, we need more people to go out and to preach the true gospel, the gospel that Jesus taught and the disciples taught. And we need more people to spread sound doctrine in general. And we also need more people to warn about false teachers and false prophets because they're out in effect. And whenever the true body of Christ steps back, they step up and they fill that void. And in terms of the Jesus movement, yes, you have these people going out and meeting hippies in the streets and trying to convert them to Christianity. And I have no doubt that many people were led to Christ and that some good came out of the movement. But I also think that a lot of bad things came out of the Jesus movement. Problems, by the way, that are still lingering in the church to this day. And I think that has to do with the fact that Lonnie Frisbee was not qualified to teach, let alone to lead a new Christian movement. And Chuck Smith, as we've discussed briefly, had some really wacky theology as well. So these hippies who knew very little about Christianity were brought into this weird movement. And I think we're rewriting history when we only look at the positive side of that and ignore all of the negative consequences. So I'll talk much more about this in part two. But I want to give you guys a small preview of what we'll talk about next time. This is Lonnie Frisbee discussing his own supposed anointing. And this older, he said, I want you to give your testimony, and then I want you to let him have it with both parents. And that Mother's Day, when the power of God fell on the congregation, and I, I gave my testimony, and then I blasted him. <laughs> The Holy Spirit fell. And then people have been doing this ever since. <laughs> and that came out of my anointing. <laughs> Shake rattle and roll. And again, we'll get more into the 1980 Mother's Day outpouring where John Wimber had Lonnie speak and how this led to the Vineyard Movement. But it's important to remember that the Vineyard Movement was part of the catalyst for the Toronto Blessing, and that led into all of the really crazy Pentecostal revivals of the 1990s and 2000s. So again, this all ties together. The more you understand the history and how these things all branch and one leads to the next, the more disturbing it is. And in the case of Lonnie Frisbee, I'm going to stop this video here, but you'll see in part two that it gets very dark. I mean, he was with men. He had fallen back into his drug use. The preachers who were letting him come to their church eventually all stopped letting him preach there because they knew that he was partying on Saturday night and preaching on Sunday. That's a quote about Lonnie Frisbee. It wasn't a secret. It was openly known. So much more on this in part two, by the way. I just wanted to give you guys a little bit of a summary to wrap things up for right now. Thank you guys so much for stopping back to the channel. If you want to see more videos like this, please go ahead and subscribe. It only takes a moment. God bless you all. Grace and peace in the name of our Lord, Jesus Christ.